One morning, while the treacherous wolf was hunting in the forest, he saw a stork family flying in the sky. He knew they had built a nest in the hills, and they had eggs in that nest. And that gave him an idea. Ha ha ha! I found what to eat. Stork eggs. Ha 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 But I have to think about how to get to that hill. Hmm. And cuddled up warm in that nest was a baby duck sleeping soundly. His stork brother rang the bell to wake him up. Hey, wake up, duck. Quack, quack, quack. The duck woke and jumped up. Huh? What's going on? We're going for a flight. Mama will check the eggs. Don't fall asleep and be eaten by the wolf. Wolf? Yes, because you can't fly high like we do. So, uh, see you later, little flightless duck. Bye-bye. <laughs> but little did they know, the treacherous wolf was already watching them and planning. When the stork siblings flew up into the sky, the baby duck tried to follow, flapping his little wings on the edge of the reeds. He hoped that one day he'd be able to fly. But his practicing was interrupted when he spotted something shining brightly among the reeds. Ooh, what's that? The bright thing he saw was a pair of red shoes. How beautiful they are. I wonder if they will fit on my feet. As soon as the baby duck put on the red shoes, he took off from the ground and flew high in an instant. <laughs> I'm flying! I'm flying! The baby duck immediately followed the stork family. Oh, look, the baby duck is here. Wow, how did you get so high? Thanks to my magic red shoes, look! <laughs> Down below, the wolf was watching them in amazement. Magic red shoes? Ah, now I have a great plan. At night, while the stork family and the baby duck were sleeping, the wolf sneaked up on them. The red shoes glowed brightly, even in the dark, and he stretched out his claws and grabbed them by the strings. Tomorrow morning, first thing, I'm going to have a stork egg omelet. <laughs> the baby duck awoke as the morning sun rose and he was alarmed when he couldn't see his red shoes next to him. Oh no! My shoes! My magic shoes are not here! How am I going to fly? The baby duck rushed to look for the mother and his siblings. Mother Stork! Brother! Where are you? However, he could not find them anywhere. <laughs> Now I won't be able to fly high without my magic red shoes. <laughs> While the baby duck was crying with sadness, he noticed the treacherous wolf flying overhead. <laughs> I'm flying. <laughs> Here I come, stork eggs. It's breakfast time. Oh, my shoes! A wolf stole my red shoes! The baby duck tried very hard to follow the wolf, but it took all the strength his little wings had to take off, and then he would fall back down to the ground. Oh, I have to protect the eggs from the treacherous wolf! Oh, if only I could fly! The wolf landed in the nest with the magic shoes and stepped towards the stork eggs. The baby duck could see him, trying to get the eggs, one by one. The stork eggs are in danger! I must stop the wolf! The baby duck mustered up all his courage and flapped his wings as hard as he could. Uh, uh, eggs! I must save the eggs! Finally, the baby duck was in flight, high in the sky for the very first time. Yay! I can fly! Ah! 
the baby duck landed and sneaked up on the wolf. He grabbed the shoestrings of the magic shoes and quickly pulled them. What? The baby duck? Shoes? Just at that moment, the stork family quickly came to the baby duck and drove the wolf away from the nest with a fury. (coughs) The treacherous wolf fell into a swamp. The stork family thanked the baby duck for saving the eggs. Now you can fly as high as we do. (laughs) Yes! Then it's time to fly together as a family, kids. The baby duck was so very happy he could fly. And from that day on, he realized that he should never stop trying and that he didn't need magic shoes. He just needed courage and perseverance. So the baby duck became the only brave duck that could fly with the storks in the sky. Once upon a time, in a little cottage in the woods, lived a mother goat and her little goats leading a happy life. The little goats were very cute. They all were like toys. Mother goat, like all mothers, loved her little goats very much. She protected them from all the wild animals in the forest. One day, before she left the house to find food in the forest, she called her little goats next to her and... My dear children, I am going into the forest. Do not open the door for anyone. If the wolf comes into the house, he will eat all of us alive. He's very shifty. He will disguise himself into different shapes and try to fool you. So how will we recognize him? The wolf has a rough voice, and I have a soft and sweet voice. So you can recognize him from his low and rough voice right away. Right when she was leaving, the mother goat remembered something else. She turned to her little goats. Ah, one more thing. The wolf's feet are black, and mine are white. You can also recognize him from his feet. Don't worry, mother. We can protect ourselves. You can count on us. Mother goat kissed her little goats one by one and headed into the woods. The wolf was watching them from afar. When he saw Mother Goat leaving, he waited a while, and then he came in front of the cottage and knocked on the door. Who is it? Little goats, open the door. Your mother is here. I brought nice food for you all. But the little goats recognized the wolf's rough voice right away. Without opening the door, they yelled out. You're not our mother. Her voice is sweet and more beautiful. You're the wolf. You can't fool us. The wolf got very angry because he could not fool the little goats. So he went to the shop bought a big piece of chalk and ate it. Now his voice sounded much softer, so he went back to the cottage and knocked on the door again. This time the wolf started to talk with his soft voice. My little goats, open the door, it's your mother. I brought food from the forest for all of you. Hearing the wolf's soft voice, the little goats thought that it was really their mother this time. Just when they were about to open the door, one of them shouted, Wait, wait! Let's look at the feet from underneath the door. Of course, when the little goats looked from underneath the door, they saw the wolf's black feet. So they yelled again without opening the door. We will not open the door for you! Our mother's feet are not black! They are white! You're the wolf! As furious as he was, the wolf left. This time, he went to the bakery. When the baker saw the wolf in front of him, he was very surprised. I'm a vegetarian now, so I will eat pastry from now on. Could you give me some flour? The wolf came out of the bakery with a little sack of flour. When he got near the cottage, he opened the sack and poured all the flour on his feet. Now his feet were all white. The shifty wolf knocked on the door for the third time. My little girl, 
Let's open the door. It's your mother. I have brought food for all of you from the forest. First, show us your feet so we know it's you, mother. The wolf showed them his feet with flour. When the little goats saw the white feet, they believed that it was their mother and opened the door. And what did they see? The wolf was standing right there in front of them. The little goats did not know what to do. They started to run around yelling. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I will catch all of you. <laughs> one of the little goats went under the desk. The second one into the bed. The third one into the chimney. Fourth kid hid in the kitchen. The fifth one got into the closet. The sixth hid behind the curtain. And the seventh kid went into the giant clock on the wall. But the shifty wolf was quick, and one by one he caught them all from wherever they were hiding. Run! Run! Come here! Don't run! I will catch you all! I said stop! The only one he could not find was the one hiding in the clock. He was already full, so he gave up on looking for them and head out. There was a big yard a little further from the cottage. The wolf lay under a tree on the yard and started to sleep, snoring. Short while after, the mother goat returned home. When she saw the door open, she knew something bad had happened and started to scream. When she entered the house, she was shocked. The tables and chairs were all upside down. Curtains were torn. The beds were all messed up. The pillows and sheets were all on the floor. Mother Goat looked for her little goats but could not find them anywhere. She started to yell out their names one by one, but not one answered. Finally, it was time to call the last one's name. Only then she heard a high-pitched voice. I'm inside the grandpa clock, mommy! Mother Goat ran to the grandpa clock and took her kid out of there. Mother Goat and kid hugged. The little goat started to tell the story, crying. The wolf came in disguise and we thought it was you and opened the door. The wolf ate all my brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Goat was very upset. She cried for her little goats. With only one of her kids remaining, she walked out and started to go towards the yard. After a while, they saw the wolf sleeping under a tree. He snored so bad that the branches of the tree were shaking. Mother Goat observed the wolf for a while. She realized that inside his tummy, some things were moving. Oh my God! Can it be that my goats are in his tummy and they're still alive? She had a plan. She turned to her kid. Run home, bring me a needle, thread and the scissors. When the little kid was running home, Mother Goat collected six big rocks from the floor. After a while, the little goat came back with a needle, thread and the big scissors. Mother Goat cut open the wolf with the scissors. She saw one of her little goats right away. And then the other ones started to appear one by one. They were all healthy. Mother Goat couldn't stay still from the joy she had. All the little goats hugged their mothers with joy. Mama, Mama, we love you. They were all full of joy. Ah, my little goats, you're safe. Mother Goat put the rocks she collected carefully inside the wolf. Then she stitched his tummy with the needle and thread. The wolf was sleeping so deep he'd not feel anything. He did not move. Mother Goat and her little goats quickly got away. When the wolf woke up, he stood up. His tummy hurt really bad. 
He thought to himself that it was because he ate too many goats. Because his tummy was full of rocks, he got really thirsty. He came next to the river to drink some water, but when he was walking, the rocks were hitting each other. My tummy feels so heavy and full. It's as if all the goats I ate turned into rocks. He wanted to kneel down and drink some water. Due to the rocks being so heavy, he lost his balance and slipped into the water. Oh! Help! Help me! I'm drowning! Help! Yelled out for help, but no one helped him. He could not bear the weight of the rocks anymore and went under into deep waters. When they saw what happened, Mother Goat and her little goats ran to the river. The wolf is dead! The wolf is dead! The wolf is dead! Hand in hand, they all started to dance and jump around. From that day on, Mother Goat and her seven little goats had a peaceful and happy life in their cottage in the forest. Once upon a time, there lived three piglets with their mother in a small house. It was time for them to leave their home and learn to live on their own. Their mother called the three piglets next to her. My dear children, the time has come for you to go out into the world. Go and start your new lives. But don't ever forget, whatever you do in this world, do the best you can. This is the only and the best way to stay alive. A little sad with a bit of excitement, the three little piglets said their goodbyes to their mummy and were on their way. After a while, they found some piece of land where they could build their own home. The youngest piglet was determined to build his home with straw. He thought this was the easiest and the fastest way to build a home. That way, he had heaps of time to play. The youngest of them all finished his house in one day. He yelled out to the other piglets. Hey you guys, I'm already finished! The eldest piglet had a look at the house. Mm, okay, but this house doesn't look steady at all. How will we protect ourselves from the wolf? The youngest piglet didn't take any notice of his brother. Don't worry, nothing will happen. Okay, don't say I didn't warn you. The middle piglet decided to make his house out of wood. From the branches he had collected in the woods, he decided to build a little cubby house. His house took exactly three days to finish. This house was a bit more steady than the one with straw. The eldest piglet walked over towards him. Uh, my dear brother, you've done a great job, but this doesn't look safe at all. Is this house going to protect us from the wolf? The middle piglet answered. Don't worry, this house is very safe. Okay. Don't say I didn't want you! While the two little piglets were having a great time in their newly built homes, the eldest of them all was constantly working because he was building a home from bricks and rocks. The other piglets thought that his effort was useless. All they did was play around and kill time. Why would you bother with this when you can quickly finish like we have? Hey, how scared is he? The eldest piglet didn't bother listening to them. He worked for one whole week and managed to finish his house made out of bricks and rocks. A day later, a hungry wolf arrived near their home. He first stood in front of the house made of straw. The little piglet was resting in his house made of straw. The wolf knocked on the door. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. You can't do anything to me. My house is steady enough. 
And so the wolf huffed and puffed, and he blew his house in. But with great effort, the little piglet managed to get away. And off he ran over to his brother's house made from tree branches. He knocked on the door, and when the middle piglet opened the door, the little piglet threw himself inside the house. Hey, close the door! The wolf can come in here! Don't worry, he can't do anything to us in this house. After a while, the wolf came by the second piglet's wooden house and yelled inside. Open the door and let me in! If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. You can't blow my house in! And so the wolf huffed and puffed and he blew his house in and brought it down. Both piglets ran to the third piglet's house and barely got away from the wolf. Brother, the wolf is going this way, what are we going to do? The oldest piglet answered, very sure of himself. Uh, don't worry, uh, the wolf cannot come in this house. A little later, the starving wolf came by the third piglet's house of bricks and stone and yelled to the three piglets. Open the door and let me in. If you don't, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. Don't you even try, you bad wolf. You cannot come in this house. The wolf got very angry. He huffed and puffed, but nothing happened. He could not bring his house down. He tried and tried, but he couldn't move one single brick. Finally, being exhausted, the wolf decided to try another way to go in. He saw the chimney up on the roof and started to climb. Realising that the wolf was going to climb up on the roof and come down the chimney, the piglet quickly lit up the fireplace right under the chimney and put a big bucket of water on the woods. The wolf barely climbed up the chimney and threw himself in and went straight into the boiling bucket. Oh, help! Help, I'm burning! Save me! Oh, help! Being free from the wolf, the piglets hugged each other with joy. The three piglets went to their mother's house the next day to tell her all that had happened. The youngest one came next to his mother. You were right, Mummy. Whatever we did in this world, we have done it to our best. If you really work for something, it will be a success. From that day on, the two piglets were never lazy. They worked hard like their big brother and lived a happy and safe life.